<laughs> okay. Um, welcome everybody to the um, No Land Developer Weekly Call. Uh, it is your contributor edition. Um, it is also the 27th of March, 2024. If you're new here, uh, we have this broken down into um, separate calls. This one's the core contributor. And then um, the following week is the uh, no core edition where the team uh, provides updates. Um, this is a way for us to document the no land journey as we um, move through the development cycle. Um, so shall we kick off um, uh, updates with OnBlock um, since you guys are all there in person and ready to go? Yeah, sure. As you guys as you guys can see, we have some members from the core team um, in our office in Seoul. Hey, everyone. Hey. <laughs> And the um, the key objective of this um, of their trip is to um, communicate with us better, to um, better define the tasks that we found um, very critical for the launch of Testnet four. Uh, as DApp developers um, building stuff on Gno, and we uh, so we had a small workshop to define the tasks and. Um, we posted a meeting log at on Hackerspace, which you can um, locate oh, cool. on the link on the agenda. Oh, wait, I, I just remembered I'm not sharing my screen. Oh, it's right there. Do you want to share your screen or? It's OK. Yeah, you can, you can just uh, share your screen. OK. All right. So uh, so it's broken down into each, um, each sector. And uh, we basically defined uh, what it is, where we need it, um, what's the current progress for each task, and um, what are the action items. So please take a look, and uh, if um, anybody can contribute to, uh, contribute to the uh, each issue, it would be really helpful. And uh, other than that, uh, we have um, some open PRs that are ready for review, and a new feature on, on Adina, which will let you open your um, wallet and a new tab. So a misclick will screw you over. And um, oh, we also had a, hosted a meetup. Yay. Yeah, if you guys weren't here, you can check out the recap blog that we just posted. And yep, that's pretty much it for this week's update. Do you guys have any questions? I mean, I guess you have on-site support there, so probably probably yep. don't. <laughs> We're good for this week. Okay. We can just ask Peter sitting like this. Yes. <laughs> All right. Since we're moving right along, uh, Jeff. Uh, oh, there, is there a question? Ah, okay. Yeah, I was gonna say very good, SLA. Jeff, do you want to run us through the birdie updates? Sure. And any questions? So um, moving along with the UI updates to give access to the usual functions. In the back end, we implemented follow and, on, and unfollow functionality. And so now we've got those in the UI. Um, and also when you go to a user's homepage, you can see who they're following and who's following them. And like many <clears throat> platforms, we define the home feed as uh, your own posts plus the posts of the people you're following, which is um, an interesting engineering question to deal with, as we'll show. Um, this, so we initially experimented with the idea that you could view your home feed without having to pay gas, right? Because you just want to flip open your phone and see your home feed. But um, the problem is that has to search all the users that you're following. So um, that's too much processing to do in one step. So we switched it so that the, your, your home feed uh, structure is saved as a realm function. But um, if the user wants to see the posts from the people they're following, they have to click a separate button, which is refresh. And that's the thing which you're gonna pay gas for. And because you have to pay gas to uh, search 
the other users that you're following and to update the persistent state of your own home feed so that then again you can just view your home feed when you want to without paying gas sort of like a render but the question of course is when you click refresh um it's gonna try to pull in all the posts from all the people you're following since the last time that you clicked refresh and what is the limit of that so we um we updated at least locally we updated our stress test graft that we're working on and um the the answer is not that many as you can see um uh, where it says refresh home post you explicitly spend gas to pull in the followed posts and we're using the standard GNO land to test this. And each transaction has a maximum 10 million micro GNOT. I guess that's 10 GNOT. Um, so the question is, if, if you're gonna spend 10 GNOT in gas to search all your followed users and to pull in their posts and to sort them into the EVL tree by date, how, how many updates can you do before you run out of gas and we found the answer is not that many about 100 posts so let's so suppose you're following 10 people and you go offline and then tomorrow you want to click refresh and all those 10 users have made 10 posts you can't you can't update so um this uh, this is fine this is the entire purpose of our you know social project is to find these limits and find reasonable engineering working rounds for them so my we have a couple meta questions right okay. in, in general why is there a limit on the amount of gas that you can use for one transaction um, you know it, 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 why, why can't you just set a flag in the transaction and say let me spend a hundred cannot you know or something and I, I I imagine it's to protect the validators so that people can't overwhelm their their processors but uh I mean you know if, if this is what we're looking at where you can quote unquote only do processing to update 100 posts um that's not much so um will there be an ability to temporarily increase the gas limit for a transaction or will in general the max gas allowed maybe on testnet 4 be larger than this okay morgan thank you so um uh, first thing like that I wanted to point out is that the amount of gas will not match exactly the will not match not uh, right. so um, yeah I the, apologize for that I I, I mix yeah. I'm mixing gas and cannot but you you get the idea yeah yeah, uh, yeah. Um, in general it makes sense to have like a limit per block of the of the amount of gas that is like available to be used um and the reason for that is that uh it's not just to not overwhelm the processing power of an individual validator but it's the fact that we kind of want to have say a block every five seconds and um so you can't have uh like 10 seconds being spent on validating all the proposed transactions of the block if you got to reach consensus within that time frame right i, I understand um, it it's uh it is necessary yeah but um, with that, with that out of the way, um, I do agree that the the sort of the gas limit right now, it's probably like on sort of the lower side than what it should be, uh, like for <laughs> real application development, as you've clearly pointed out. Um, so I think like uh, we'll eventually we we're, we're we are currently undertaking some changes on how gas works itself. That, which will actually increase the amount of gas we use, uh, like the amount, the 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 number, the number, right, of, the, of gas used. Um, but uh, eventually, like after we do that and we start actually benchmarking uh, 
like after after we even assign uh, individual values to each opcode in the GNOME VM, we can uh, then calculate what should be the actual maximum amount of gas allowed. So 10 million is in the kind of way uh, a sort of very rough guess that was put in place uh, quite some time ago. I think if we don't have the benchmarks ready, we could reasonably um, change the value before, like, say, test test four to even just be 10x, right? Uh, but there will be a definite and concrete value, but that has to come after benchmarking. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so yeah, I have more say. questions, but I'm interested to hear from Jay. Thanks, Morgan. Thank you, Morgan. Um, so yeah, I mean the 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 block gas might go up, but I think um, um, this uh, this is pointing at a uh, a general problem that you know, and the solution I think is not to increase the gas. Right. Um, but uh, okay, so here's I, I I how we should think about realm storage and gas and all that. Um, I think what we should do is generally think of realm storage as storing only the things that need to be stored. Um, and then in the beginning, we won't, but later on, we're going to have uh, Merkle proofs. Okay? I mean, everything is already being Merkleized. Um, there's a little bit of optimization to do. Um, but if you're using the AVL tree, it's a binary tree, it's already more or less optimized at least in, in that regard um and uh and if you can create um services outside of the blockchain that read the data and then does the appropriate indexing or collation or aggregation and can provide to anyone who wants to read proof any set of proofs necessary to prove that okay this is good then you know that's generally what we should do um some things are going to be limited i mean like uh it, it may be the case that what you're trying to do here um is not something that can be easily be proven um even with merkle proofs so that's something to look out for i mean i think one of the solutions there might be to have maybe multiple indexers that are competing with each other with uh, accountable um, accountable um, signed results. So if you get a wrong result, then uh, maybe there's a way to have anyone audit the actual results and see that, okay, this, 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 this indexer gave the wrong result and here's the proof there's a signature and here's the result but you know the actual thing that everyone else computed is different so that's kind of a, a shortcut or a or hacky way to do it but i'm sure there might be better ways to do this um that's one so um yeah not everything should belong in the chain and uh, a lot of these things you know we need to figure out how to move it off of the chain because uh because uh, of these problems so if you move it to an indexer, how do you avoid the problem of relying on some single centralized server being online to make your app work? Uh -huh. You can have, um, you could have, maybe there can be multiple ones that are competing that are all providing a service. Maybe, um, maybe you want to ask more than one um, if you want to be more sure that the result is correct. That's just... Well, not. I'm concerned about correctness, but I'm also concerned about availability, right? It's it's uh, mm -hmm. you know, the beauty of a of a blockchain is all these validators, and it's never offline by design. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, a lot of the services that uh, are are mm, 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 if if there's if there's that much demand, and we're 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 programming our services and uh, and providers and clients to pay microtransactions, then presumably um, there can be many and they can all be profitable. Well, so I don't I don't want to take up too much time here. Uh, you know, talking with Manfred also, this is often the answer to um, the things we're seeing, which is don't use a blockchain, use an index here, use the blockchain as the uh, the the ground truth for the data you're dealing with, but then don't 
don't write your DAP in GNU. Write it in something else that's running on the on on an indexer, which uh, and then the indexer does everything and just pulls data from the blockchain. That that's a different path. We 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 can explore that and but it's it's a different game. In general, it has to be this hybrid approach, right? I mean, I'm not yeah. sure if there's any blockchain that can fit what you're trying to do, where all of the things fit in the blockchain. Um, um, we might be able to do more, um, surely, like as we optimize the VM um, and we can increase the block size, um, I'm sure we can, we, can, we can do better. But uh, there's always going to be things that, that shouldn't belong on chain. Um, one more thing, uh, we should we should come up with a different name. So uh, we it, it should be called Gno Social. Um, anything that you know has Gno in the name, um, we should have an agreement. Uh, OnBlock has it with uh, you know um, with their project, but uh, we haven't discussed Gno Social. Um, so uh, ideally, it, there's a, there's a different name for it. Yeah, we can we can do whatever you wish. We'll we'll handle that offline. Um, uh, we're not pretending that we're writing the 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 killer app that you're looking for. It's it's really just a name for a, a research project to look into these issues. You know, and we can we can name it whatever makes sense. Yes, please. Um, so uh, well, so there's two different paths here. If 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 we were to continue with the path of using the the realm code and data storage itself to handle this then we had a couple questions like of course the thing we can do is we can arbitrarily limit the amount of processing that our refresh function attempts to do and it can just return a flag which says you know please call me again <laughs> to let me do some more processing right um, an alternative would be the answer is probably no, but is there some way that a realm function can be doing some processing and sort of magically know if it's about to run out of gas and and uh, you know quit in a in an elegant way? I just wrote that. You don't have to copy me. That's 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 the uh, Michelle the above question. Can a realm can refresh home post know that it's about to run out of gas? Um, is uh, you're probably going to say no, but I we need to ask. Um, sounds like we might. Um, that, that might be interesting. I, I think I think developers would, if that were a functionality that were available, uh, uh, that would I think a lot of people would want to take advantage of of that. Mm. I mean. Mm. If it runs out of gas, um, it does roll back, so it wouldn't have any side effects besides you know, the, the payer losing more money. But um, yeah, you know what we'd like to know is, uh, yeah, to, to, you know, in other words, it's doing some incremental processing, and we'd like to commit as much as we can and, and quit, you know, uh, elegantly. Um, mm. But but if that's just not the direction that a uh, realm code writer should be going, then you can say so, but it, it just occurred to us. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I, um, another question is, I wonder if a different data structure might help. I don't, um, I'm not 100% sure what the, the functionality that you're trying to program is, but uh, maybe maybe a different data structure could, could help with this. Mm. If it's like, mm -hmm. like a user, sorry, I could, go ahead. Which would let us uh, know when to quit processing before we have our, not, all not, our work rolled back. I, I mean, more like um, um, you know, a different data structure that might um, help um, reduce the big O gas cost for the right. try to do. It's possible. We can find a more efficient way of doing the data. Um, right now, we're just stuffing things into an AVL tree where the uh, the key is the uh, you know the timestamp of the uh, of the post so that then then there's a simple non-gas query function which allows the mobile app just to fetch the last hundred posts by date including 
all the uh, posts co co correlated with the the people that you're following. Right. Right. Yeah. So but, yeah. But it sounds like you're also suggesting that maybe we're just asking too much of the of the realm to be doing this. Maybe this is is work that belongs in a um, off chain functionality. Yeah. If it's if it's per subscriber, right? Like. You know, there, if there's a hundred thousand subscribers to something, then it, it's impossible for a single transaction to like, do all that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't want to take up too much time here. Um, we can talk. Maybe we have a call with Manfred on Friday. Maybe we can talk about. We, we already um, Remy is also working on. Uh, using your existing TX indexer to, to handle some other things. We just want to um, cache some information locally on the phone and just have a notification when the source data has been updated so that we can refresh our cache. That's a, a low uh, amount of processing, but a, a use. So we're already playing with indexers. Maybe we just need to point ourselves in that direction some more. But uh, the question becomes, you know, Security, right? How to, you know if if you're relying on this, you know the, the the how do you review the the code that the indexer is running? How do you know that it actually ran that code? Um, you know you can sign things. Maybe you need to have somebody on the side validating those things, just like there's validators validating the realm transactions. It's uh, fascinating. Um, but we 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 need to, some pointers. How do they go forward? Mm -hmm. um, um yeah well it seems like um it seems like a general approach for problems like this um i'm just gonna rehash what i said um mm -hmm. there might be other ways to do it but one practical solution would be to have um uh, index uh, providers api providers that are accepting microtransactions and then um then maybe there's uh, some way to maintain a list of approved or uh, of, uh, index providers. And then the client could choose sort of randomly, say three or four or five, maybe three is enough or two uh, of them. And then uh, does a query for a given height and receives results that are signed. And then, um, and then uh, if they're the same, then assumes it's correct. And if they're different, then um, then uh, raises a flag, and then mm -hmm. uh, investigation happens, something like that. And some way to pay those indexers for their mm -hmm. processing. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, um, we'll keep looking at that for sure. Uh, we can wrap up real quick. Uh, just the last comment, which is. Um, we we on the pre, uh, one of our previous projects we worked on Gino Native Kit and we're working on the series of videos to to introduce uh, people to that and we we met with Dragos and talked uh, about um, possibly seeing if we could uh, use Flipondo as a project to demonstrate how one would uh, take possibly existing code and and easily uh, switch it over to using uh, GNU Native Kit to talk to the uh, uh, blockchain, especially if one wants to attempt to do a, a mobile app instead of a browser app. So um, there will be more to show on that later. Um, and as part of that, uh, we, we, we do have clear instructions for you being able to build the 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 bundler um, that allows you no know, native kit to bundle the Go runtime onto your phone, but Remy is working on an easy to use NPM package, which you could use in Expo or something else like that, which will make it even easier. So there's progress moving forward on that. Okay, are there? Um, that's exciting. Um, Thanks, Dragos. Yeah, for like understanding how Flipando is moving to um, uh, no native kit. Are there any questions to the the group for Birdie? I see lots of good comments in the chat, but um, we don't want to take up more time. Oh, okay. 
Um, I will hopefully. I mean, try. well, I, I, I take it back. If Millish is right, is that there would be some way to, I don't know how you could estimate the amount of gas because it's like the, you don't know how much gas you're going to use until you attempt a computation. But if there is a way to, ahead of time, maybe through some statistics you've gathered to know that, yeah, I can process 50 messages before I run out of gas. But um, uh, we can talk about that offline. Another way might be to split, um, split your transaction into multiple transactions that the user can um, maybe uh, put in multiple messages. Mm -hmm. So a multi-message signed by a single user um, would mean that uh, each one, um, yeah, so it, it you know, just splitting it into multiple transactions, but it can still be just one signature. Um, and if the message is small, then, uh, you know, it, it wouldn't be a large transaction. It would be, it would be larger, um, but you could split it into 10, say, mm -hmm. and if one of them fails, it, you know, it, would be, it might be the last one, say, oh, I don't know. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, there's probably a lot of ways to do this. I feel like if, if we were to try to query in the middle of the transaction how much gas is left and do something based on that, it, it just feels like it would be, you know, really, really complicated. But mm -hmm. Yeah, it sort of breaks the, uh, breaks the, the layer of abstraction of, of what the uh, realm function is doing to be able to, to kind of query its own ex execution environment like that. Yeah, but um, in the long run, um, when we have concurrency say, um, and even without, um, uh, but you know, with concurrency, we should be able to support like a long running process in the background that maybe uses gas, from, uh, leftover gas from transactions, for example. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and, and querying the execution environment like that poses problems for um, determinism also. Although in theory, at some point in the execution, it's deterministic how many you yeah. know, operations you've done, but still kind of hurts my brain about determinism, being able it's to do that. Deterministic. It, it would just um, yeah be difficult to predict what, what it's doing, but uh, it would still be deterministic despite yeah. <laughs> chaotic. I don't know. Mm. Um, another thought was um, um, you could maybe have uh, indexer results that are signed, but um, but um, as long as it's easy for anyone to prove that the indexer signed something bad with a fraud proof, essentially, you know that might be another way to handle the situation. Uh, so, now, like that, the reputation of the indexer goes way down, or something. Um, they could actually get slashed for some yeah. fraud proof. Yeah. But, but all of that would require um, uh, formatting your data in the right way to allow fraud proofs to, to happen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and what programming language you use that for? Is that still GNOME? Uh, for the I guess. Or, uh, or uh, whatever language the indexer is running to do its computation. Mm, with the fraud proof idea, the, the language wouldn't matter. It's all about the data. Mm -hmm. sort of proof uh, whatever language you're using will need to be able to parse and understand uh, the Merkle tree structure of the GNO realm data state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it could be programmed in anything. Okay. Well, thank you. I'm uh, okay. trying to watch the time. Okay. Here. Thanks, Jeff. And um, so uh, we can consolidate the next two. Uh, Dragos, do you want to update us on uh, Zentastic and Flipando? Yes. And you're uh, also in Seoul. Yeah. Yes, that, that was my uh, the start of my update. I was able to meet in real life with some of the uh, meme creators. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> it, been, uh, it was really nice to see you. I hope you, uh, I'll meet you again tomorrow at the event. You'll be there. Maybe we have more time to, to catch up. Today was very, very rushed. Uh, that was pretty much the highlight of my <laughs> update, but let's get back to some code. Um, Zentastic is going on.
pretty good. We have uh, core data types and logic and marshalling. This opens a little bit of a question. Uh, in the previous dev call, I've seen uh, the progress made by um, uh, in the direction of making the uh, NoVM return JSON formatted output, which makes pretty much all the structure in the in some realm to be already wrapped in JSON. Uh, is there any timeline to when this would be merged? Is there, I know there's been some amazing progress because we've seen some updates, some demo in the last dev call, like right at the end of it, but I don't mm. know what is the status of this, if this, the PR has been merged, the functionality is part of the core or not, uh, because based on that, I may ditch my own marshalling. Um, <laughs> yeah, Morgan, that, that's pretty much it. <laughs> uh, so my question is, do I still need to do all my marshalling for the structs that I do, or uh, I can wait and use uh, the, the actual API response? This is a question for, for later on, maybe in the next dev call. Um, and Flipando, uh, the progress on Flipando is, first of all, I uh rehash on meeting with no native i already started to familiarize myself with how i can use the GNOME provider and the entire uh you know uh stack that uh, that Bertie designed for no mobile and making significant uh, uh <laughs> thank you jay I, I don't know if this is an actual pr uh maybe morgan can can talk more about that if he's up to date because there was a, a demo first from uh, someone else uh, in the team. Uh, I don't know if um, it's... I'll link the PR. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm working on this. I'm making good progress. I have a first batch of, of uh, feedback and maybe we can have an, another call with the Betty team uh, next week. Hopefully in about two weeks, I may have something actually running in a simulator, like having the uh, the Flipando work, the Flipando app working on mobile using no native kit. The last yeah. thing about uh, about Flipando is that uh, according to the roadmap, we kind of enter into feature freeze uh, at the end of March, which means we will start to work on deployment and bug fixing and getting ready for production uh, and getting out of the uh, beta with uh, uh, within the next three months and reaching feature parity with the EVM version of the uh, of the Flipando game. Right now, I would say the Novian version of Flipando is had about 10% uh, more features than the EVM. EVM kind of needs to catch up a little bit. So that's where I am. That's my update. Looking forward to meet with the guys again tomorrow in Seoul. Thanks, Dragos. Is there, um, I don't know if anyone can answer about um, the pull request uh, in terms of timing. Yes, right? uh, I think ultimately we, I hope we'll merge it, but uh, I don't want to rush it either. Because okay. for now, I don't think people use, are using the return of message call, I mean the call method. Uh, when we will have the JSON reply, like people will start using the JSON reply actually. So I want to be sure on uh, on the actual kind of response, for example. Also, I still have to fix some stuff because uh, when I did this update, uh, of course, a lot of other stuff is using uh, the call method. So I had to fix uh, this. Uh, I'm I'm so looking for updating the um, GNO API or at least how it works. Hopefully, on the the JSON uh, and how actually we interact with it at least in Go. Uh, yeah, so there is multiple answer to uh, multiple question to answer. Um, yeah, but uh, I really want, like I think everybody wants this to be merged, but uh, I don't want it to rush it either. So yeah, I'm, I have no timeline, like uh, as soon as possible, I will say, but uh, no rush. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, um, 
if there's nothing else, uh, we could move on to the Varmeta team. Yeah. yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, for the last week, we are focusing on the internal dis uh, discussion about the uh, NFT and uh, token in our game. Mm -hmm. And uh, we define some uh, about how uh, NFT, what's the uh, style of NFT we will uh, uh, expose for the uh, gamer and uh, how the gamer can uh, get the uh, NFT from your uh, arrow, from your uh, marketplace, or from your uh, buy on the game. Mm. And uh, another uh, section here we are discuss about the uh, tokenomic about our game and uh, is is uh, how how user can uh, using uh, our game and uh, using the token to do the action on game and we try to making the NFT and token uh, tokenomic is uh, is uh, easy to integration with the Dino and uh, with uh, our uh, uh, our uh, unity educate yeah the uh, uh, our document in the draft version and we will continue uh, a bit more and we will when we final on the, our internal discussion we will uh, um, uh, say it's more detail on the group and uh, and uh, need some uh, uh, feedback from the uh, our community or improve our uh, uh, tokenomic and uh, M NFT. Yeah. Uh, for the uh, account action in the last week, we had uh, a meeting with Zeg uh, uh, one and uh, discussed about the, our Unity at Sky and uh, and uh, account application. And um, we had some uh, we had question about. Um, should we uh do a build that future only a cow section or should we build uh, that future sim has a similar function uh, uh, a cow person on the ethereum yeah that's our question because in the ethereum the cow version mean has many future like uh, social login uh, recover the uh, recover account uh, payment by another token not need uh, the native token of chain and uh, oh. sorry um uh, can you can you sort of repeat the repeat the question please do you see it here uh, too in the screen? Yeah, should we build you can see on the screen. Or should we build a feature that is similar to account disruption on ETH? Yeah, on the Ethereum, uh, the government has um, multiple uh, function like the uh, social network login, uh, social network out and uh, recovery is a uh, um, account when the user uh lossing or missing thing or uh, normally the the transaction will be paid by the native token for, for gas but um, uh, if uh, apply the account application on the ethereum user can pay by the uh, another token or by a, a, a fiat Yeah, well, let someone else answer this because I'm not familiar with the uh, the Ethereum feature. Um, um, this is this is on my plate to um to look at today, so I'll I'll get back to you a little bit. Um, I think I might be able to answer this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Is this question also in your um the issue you have, or uh, or um, is it just located here? This question. 
uh, just look at here but I, okay. I will put it on the uh, account attraction issue for okay. the they can uh, check it yeah okay thank you um okay moving on to territory do you guys want to grab this and give an update hello uh, yep uh, we'll share my screen can you see uh, my Firefox? Yes, now we can. Okay. Uh, so um, during uh, migration to Portal Loop, uh, we saw an issue that didn't happen on uh, previous uh, test nets. Um, uh, it only affects uh, GNU test, uh, and you can see all the details here, but basically, uh, every is not working correctly in, in its function, but only within GNU test. Um, I added the take star test, which does the same thing, and the take star test works, so it's really just a GNU test thing. Uh, this is preventing us from adding proper unit tests in realms, uh, because some realms need to do this uh, pre in init. So it's a bit blocking to get things merge or to open the proper PRs on some of our, our stuff because we can add the unit test. Um, we started uh, brainstorming on the works DAO, DAO things um, we took with Manfred. So you can see uh, the full document here, uh, which um, uh, states the resources we we used to start work on this. Um, one thing important is this uh, lexicon, which um, describes some elements uh, to try to make it clear. And, and this is open for, like, we would re really like to have your feedback to know if it's, we understand things correctly. So there's the contribution DAO, which would be the authority structure of the chain, um, like uh, choosing validators and stuff like that, I guess. Um, what is called the works DAO uh, from Manfred's definitions is for now something that aggregates uh, information about a user uh, as a contributor, like if he, he got works points from uh, sub DAOs, uh, some uh, personal data, maybe linking a GitHub address, stuff like that, uh, and being extensible. Uh, and some example of sub DAO like evaluation DAO will rate uh, dev contribution and distribute work works points. The support DAO would rate support contribution, distribute works points, and so on. Um, and we started writing a bit of uh, the interfaces we want to use for the aggregator, which uh, itself would um, be first used in some kind of profile. Um, like verified um, a GNU profile for a contributor which uh, this is a, a demo, it, it would not uh, fully be like that, but if a GitHub address is linked to this uh, GNU address, it could show like the contribution on GNU-related repos, it could show um, uh, work distributions uh, and stuff like that, and some user-provided information, but it would be centralized in this um, uh, works DAO works or works aggregator realm. And so we have a um, uh, few proposal one with strict types, um, for example, like this work distrib type, works distrib type, um, which you can see an example there. And we have also some version with um, NEs to make it more, like uh, to make it easier to add new types. So we don't know which one would be better for now. With we are um, thinking about it more, but I think for this um, we we'll maybe keep it like that for now and start adding um data sources first so we have like a, a few data sources and we can make a meaningful abstraction instead of first writing the abstraction then then the data sources and so for that uh, one of the first thing um we did was uh working on linking a, a github address um to actually link uh, contribution to the gno repo to to a gno address and uh, we have another brainstorm about this, and I will let um, a Ghost from Territory talk about that, if you're here. Uh, yes, I'm here. I will uh, just share my screen. 
or or uh, I will or you can share it, uh, Norman, if you have it. And hi, Ghost. I think this is your maybe yes. first time joining the call. <laughs> oh yes, I, I, I forgot. Okay. One time. Well, welcome. Thank you. Uh, him and uh, Mike Sito, I think he's here too, which are two new contributors to the, the territory team for, for GNU, that, that are working on GNU. Yes. Hello, everyone. Hi, welcome. Uh, uh, if you have the link, you can share it or yeah, I can share it. Yeah, maybe share your, yourself, it's, it's better. So you can show also the code pen and stuff like that, which I don't have the links for. Yes, just need to how the account sorry um maybe while he's preparing we can start on the question we yeah, had uh, should yeah. you, you take the presentation yeah we can maybe start going through the questions <clears throat> that you have uh, while you're working on this so um so i already uh, like do you agree with the direction we're going for works uh, work stuff because it's uh, something really important and and i i think everyone should shame shame in on on this uh so should in the context of this proposal which um is things from talks with Manfred and he called this aggregator the works DAO, DAO but I think we should maybe rename it uh, works, works aggregator for now and since the actual D DAO is not really defined um, the things on definitions and like, I already asked the question on, on the document actually so if anyone wants to say anything <laughs> I, I feel like we should um have another design session to figure out what that looks like what works DAO should be um i know we were going in some direction with the works token or some number but um i think it's it, it probably makes more sense to recreate something that looks like um the github when you go to github you can see um the green squares right um so so that works well for github but um you know arguably it makes sense to 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 create something that that is specialized for our work not everything is going to be uh, on github we might not even use github um but uh it would be nice to see over time what kind of contributions people have made um so uh, uh you know what's the, the green tiles is what i'm talking about right so it's not really shown here but um but uh imagine imagine those tiles uh imagine you can you can kind of have some sense of how big how much work you did each day uh i feel like instead of works we should put hours just call it hours you know um how many hours did you work a day like how much man hours was put into something and that makes a lot of sense i don't see why we need to create something called works um and uh and that way anyone can see um just you know how you know what 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 weeks what days someone's been working on what um and it's a it's just a tool to assist in evaluating whether someone is contributing to the project or not in much the same way you can do the same by looking at the green tiles on github um and uh i feel like the primary objective or responsibility of works DAO is to is to um evaluate whether someone is working or not and uh and if they are then um then help pay them a salary so to speak you know it doesn't have to be salary but something they should get rewards for having you know for doing work um based on some schedule right and uh and if they haven't been doing work you know they should um uh, maybe they're uh, maybe maybe it also tracks vacation time like you know uh, within a year or so much you can say i'm out of office so to speak right and then um and if uh, if you haven't been doing any work then there should be some committee 
within work style that says, okay, well, this person is clearly not active anymore, and then take some action um, for that person. So if uh, if they're a high uh, if they're a top tier member, what that means is um, they they become um, an inactive member, but um, but it doesn't mean they can't vote. They can still vote and participate because they've earned that tenure. Um, but uh, maybe it means something different for a low ranking, uh, lower tier member. Maybe it means they get uh, booted. It really depends on on the tier. So. That's something for GovDAO itself to decide, but it can it can receive messages from WorkStyle. Um, so within WorkStyle, there will be some tooling to help assess, you know, generally what someone is doing. Um, some notion of it with some committee evaluating whether someone is still active or not, and uh, something like uh, rewards distribution based on whether someone is active or not and what tier they are in pretty uh pretty um pretty even in terms of uh so if you're active you know so the, the input to how much reward you get is not based on works or hours even it's just based on what tier member are you what tier are you in and are you active or not kind of a boolean thing and um and maybe there's some uh some within it the component that figures out ultimately how many GNOT you get right so some uh, some component that that has to do with uh, an internal treasury and uh, and some algorithm to disperse based on uh, what I just said um, all that said uh, I think there needs to be a new design spec for what works now is uh, we need to redo it okay. Uh, thanks. It's very instructive. Uh, I think I will to spark the the new design session. I will try to merge what you just said with what Manfred said, and make a document so that everyone can add their thoughts. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. And uh, now, uh, Gus will talk about the. Um, anyone maybe want to say anything about this? I think that's that's okay for now. Um, I know we also have maybe Phil, who can join the the conversation as well. But maybe we can move on to the to Ghost. Yes. Okay. Yes, uh, I will uh, just present you uh, what, uh, the two proposals for the GitHub uh, uh, link account or GitHub Oracle. And uh, we have uh, two proposals, and it depends who will pay the gas. Uh, for the post first proposal, uh, we will say uh, GNO will pay the gas. And for this, user will going to ask the GitHub to the verification, uh, to the server to the verification. And the server will uh, uh, search to the, uh, in the user uh, repository the dark GNO and the file uh, uh, and the and some file and it will and then we will uh, pass this file to have the address and uh, we will verify also the signature and after that we are going to push the address and the github id to the realme we have a second proposal and uh, with this proposal uh, the user will pay the gas and uh, this need to the server to add a public key uh, to the realme. And uh, we have just uh, this step it is the same. We will uh, uh, search the config uh, a file on the Dubgnos um, repository. We will parse that we will verify the signature. And now the server will uh, going to sign uh, the address or some some data to push it to, uh, to give it to the user interface and after that the user will use this signature to um, uh, to push it in the realme it is the two proposal that we have we are trying to to david and then we have some issue about that 
about the second pro proposal, we see we didn't have some uh, crypto, um, uh, some uh, crypto loop. It is not really integrated, uh, not yet integrated, and uh, and I. Um, maybe I can talk a bit about yeah. this one. Yes. Um, can you show the discussion documents? Uh, we want to use uh, ED 25519 uh, to do the actual um, uh, server uh, authentication. Um, so we will need to verify an ED 25519 signature in the GNO uh, in the realm code. So should we uh, attempt to officially add um, this library support uh, in GNO? Uh, do you think you want it in GNO, or should we like make a realm? Uh, should we do like the SHA256 SHA and uh, have a kind of wrapper on GNO libraries? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think for uh for signature verification, it, it makes sense to have some, um, it could be an STD. Um, whatever it is, you know, it, sh it should be optimized, right? So uh, we can use a uh, native or we can go put it in STD or somewhere. Um, but uh, I guess the important thing is we need to, we need to, charge the appropriate gas for it right so whatever it is um it needs to, the user needs to pay the the right amount based on the actual computation that is being done okay so i guess uh we'll try to open a, a pr for this yeah um i think that would be a good step um since it's uh since it's just fixed size stuff uh, i mean yeah i mean i guess we can start with an std and then uh we can consider also wrapping it in the future but uh i'm i'm, I'm open to suggestion here mm, miloš asks why do we need the coblitz curve support if we do end up adding in i can't see it being a port to know since these lives are usually optimized client side can you can you talk about that? I'm not sure what you mean here. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I'm not sure if the suggestion is to um, add add the Kablitz curve support as a GNU package, or add um, or add just just uh, standard lift support in the form of injecting it somehow. Uh, that's the question I'm asking. Actually, uh, I I think uh, injecting is would be probably the best. But actually, if, if if you want to use uh, if you want us to use another signature algorithm, we could also. Uh, it's just that uh, I think ED two five five one nine is the best, but we can use another one. Yeah, if we're gonna support it, um, I suppose we should support the one that Tenement already uses. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry. So whatever whatever is in um, PM two slash uh, packages slash crypto. But since uh, uh, GNU is supposed to be kind of compatible with Go, why not directly use the official uh, crypto packages like this one? The the Go standard library doesn't have uh, kibbutz curves. Oh, sorry. Wait, wait. Uh, why do we talk about Koblitz curve? Maybe I'm missing some cryptographic knowledge. Oh, I thought the, you, you were talking about the same thing. The, the signing scheme you mentioned, so 25519. Yep. Yeah, that, that's the that's the Koblitz curve. Okay, okay. That's what I thought. Yeah. I, I, internally, I think we use, I'm not sure what kind of implementation we use, I like what package implementation it is. Um, I'm not sure if it's something we import from. I think like the the actual curve implementation is something we import from BTC EC, the the library that's used the cross blockchain clients. 
and this is this is a like a it has like a C C under the hood right implementation. Um, yeah, yeah, we, we we can look into it. No worries. Do you, do you need like to verify specific signatures? What what kind of signatures are you verifying? That's that's like the primary question. Okay, so that's uh, in the scheme where we have um, so the Oracle realms as a list of authorized uh, servers, and the servers uh, have a public key, and um, uh, the server. So it's so the user pay the gas when he's linking his GitHub account. So the um, the user ask a signature from the server, which uh, verifies that uh, the account is correctly owned. And then this uh, signature is verified in the realm uh, using the list of, pub of authorized server public keys. Yeah, that, does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so you need you need the you need the the verification scheme, the signing scheme we use in the in the node, right? Um, so it's it's not a GNU signature. Uh, it could be maybe. Uh huh. But, uh, since... with anything you want. Uh huh. Cool. 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 Okay. I mean, the, yeah. Depending on like the size of the data you're trying to sign, you can you can optimize this. If if um, there there is there is no reason to go with ed two five five one nine if if you're not going to derive anything like an address from it. Maybe you can use something something simpler. Um. Uh... I think it's nice to support. Um, I, don't, I don't see why we want to support it. We're using uh, the Tendermint uses golang.org x crypto at 25519. Um, might as well support it as uh, std. at 25519, or if we can wrap x crypto at 25519 either way. And if needed, we can use another another uh, curve and signing scheme. Um, so I think that's all for us. Yep. It would help if I unmuted myself. <laughs> Sorry. So this one, uh, Norman, um, uh, needs an issue open, right? um to discuss uh yep or we can just open the pull request to add the uh, okay. it in a studio that sounds good um i know we're over time so um i think unless anyone has any other updates questions i'm sorry we didn't get to open it up to everyone that's on the call um does anyone I, in the last few minutes have questions? Oh, well, it's not a question. I just have one thing to say. I want to um, say thank you to the core team for sending Leon, Peter, and um, Milos over to Korea. Because, <laughs> like, uh, due to time zone constraints, like, sometimes, like, these small um, conversations on Signal and Slack, like, can be, like, days or even weeks for, like, the simplest things. And, like, having um, real-time discussions have been really productive for us to uh, sort out the priorities and get some insight into the issues that we've been facing. And we should try to have these more often. And yep, that's all. And thank you guys for making it such a successful event over the weekend. It was really cool to see. Um, OK, well, if there's nothing else, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot else. But uh, since we're at time, um, we will see you all next week. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone. The reservoir. Bye. 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 Bye.